Before I get to this video, I want to give everyone a heads up. I do have merch, so if you guys would like to help support this channel, link will be in the description. Again, thank you guys so much. I hope this channel hits 100k before the end of the year. Now let's get to the video. Yeah. <laughs> 911, where's your emergency? Um, I, I, I just got home, and the, the, my house is completely trashed. It looks like someone broke in the side door. Okay. How long have you been? How long have you been gone? I I've been gone all school day. Um, I okay. got home. Are you there by I'm, yourself? Yeah. I'm how old are you? Mom. I'm are I'm you? 15. Okay. They're just the whole scenario, the whole thing, the crime scene. You know, really when you start well. interviewing the kid, just just things just were were not adding up. Things were amiss from the very very beginning. Gregory Logan Ramos was born June 14, 2003 in Florida. His mother, Gail Clevinger, was a Catholic and an accomplished architect. Clevinger studied architecture at the University of Miami, graduated in 1995, as well as studied international studies at the Glasgow School of Art. Clevinger was described by her family and friends as a loving, trustworthy person with a lot of drive. Gail, in what seemed like she didn't want to have kids until she was established in her career. She waited until she was around 31 years old, and in 2003, she had Gregory Logan Ramos. I couldn't find much information on Gregory's biological father, but I did read in an article that he was never a big part of his life. Gail was a driven mother, always pushed Gregory to try new things and always try his best at everything he did. Gregory was raised as a Catholic. Gail and Gregory joined a martial arts practitioner which is more of a low impact style of martial arts, focusing more on breathing techniques, fitness and spirituality than combat. Gregory also joined the Police Explorer program, which was made for kids who completed the sixth grade and had interest in a career in law enforcement or anything related to a career in the criminal justice system. Greg wasn't a socially awkward kid. He always had friends and joined various clubs. Your freshman year might be a bit overwhelming. And believe us, we know. But there's a lot of classes to choose from to make this year a lot more memorable and a lot more fun. His grades were usually above average. In a 2008 dating profile, Gail Clevinger wrote in her bio section, I'm an architect, a Catholic, and currently interested in raising a happy child. She ended up meeting and marrying a man by the name of Danny, who became Gregory's stepfather. Gregory's grandmother described him as never having a mean bone in his body. He never had a history of violence until the night of November 1st, 2018. Danny was away on a business trip to Seattle, and Gail was livid when she saw Gregory's grades and noticed he had gotten a D. She confronted him because she knew he could do better. When she did, Gregory wasn't having it that day, and they began to argue. During the argument, Gail called Danny to inform him about his grades. After finishing the argument with her son, Gail went straight to bed. Gregory was infuriated that she had confronted him about his grades. So once she went to sleep, Gregory entered her room around midnight. At 12.30, he started to strangle his own mother. His first attempt, she survived, so he began to strangle her again. He later described it took 30 minutes to strangle and kill his own mother. Judging by Gregory's mugshot, you could tell Clevinger really fought for her life because he had a bunch of scratches on his face. Once he had murdered his mom, he quickly went to work and enlisted two of his friends, who were 17 at the time. Gregory put his mother in a wheelbarrow put her dead body in the family van and drove off. At first he drove to an area off Holly Hill to dump his mother's body, but quickly changed his mind and drove back to his house, where he picked up a shovel and a broom and drove to a church about a mile and a half from his home. With the help of his two friends, they began to dig and bury his mother. He later said the site behind the church was a place of comfort for him and his friends, a spot in a wooded area that they'd smoke drink and hang out. Ramos also chose that site to dispose his mother's body 
because the ground was malleable, so he could dig and bury his mother easily. Once they buried her, he and his friends began rearranging the rock so it wouldn't look like it had been dug up. After he buried his mother, he and his friends went to a nearby Circle K to get a soda and talk about their cover story. He then went back home with his friends to make it look like a burglary. They kicked in the door and began trashing the place. He grabbed his PS4, a computer, a rifle, and other items. The very next morning, he went to school like a normal day. Left school early, which was one of his mistakes, but we'll get to that later. Once he was home, he made, in his own words, a Grammy-winning phone call to 911, talked about the horrible incident that did not occur. Once investigators arrived, he began to tell his story. According to Officer Chatwood, investigators suspected Ramos almost immediately. His story didn't add up. For one, his mother didn't show up to work, and his school attendance showed he had left early and never rode the bus, which he had told investigators that he did. They quickly brought him in for questioning. Detectives were able to break Ramos after several hours of interrogation. That's when he began to change his story, referring to his actions as self-defense, even though they had no history of bad blood between his mother and him. He said she was abusive, that he had to kill her before she killed him. Officer Chatwood described Ramos as being very proud of his work, and he wanted to show it off. He said to watch how cold and callous he was when talking about it was the most shocking to him. Like I said earlier, he even described the phone call to 911 as a Grammy winning phone call. Chatwood described Ramos as one of the top three psychopaths he's ever encountered in his career. He said he had no signs of remorse and was a soulless individual. Ramos wanted to be a homicide detective. Chatwood said he tried to use his classes to benefit himself in this situation. Just by the research, looking into it, you could clearly tell the crime really affected Chatwood. Saturday morning, Keglarek and Poras are the ones who led the officers to the body. Detectives also found a shovel, a broom used to bury the mother and straighten up the area around the fire pit. According to Chatwood, the items were found in the woods by the pit at a local gym and at Keglarek's home. The stepfather Danny Clevinger returned from Seattle on Friday night and he was met by detectives to inform him what had happened. Ramos was arrested along with his two friends where they were held at the Department of Juvenile Justice. Chatwood really pushed for Ramos to be tried as an adult but would not be eligible for the death penalty. Once in court, Ramos showed remorse for his actions. As he pleaded guilty to the charges, he made no excuses, admitting what he did was wrong. Ramos asked the court to let Boras and Keglerik be released to their families, saying they really had no idea what was going on. During Ramos' sentencing, the grandmother asked if she could see his face up close one last time. The judge granted her permission and she began to pray for him. Ramos ended up getting 45 years with a chance to be released after 25. Once he is released, he'll be on probation for the rest of his life. Dylan Keglerik ended up spending two years in jail and getting a decade of probation. As for Poras, his case is still pending in the courts. All right, everyone, I hope you found my video interesting. I want to apologize for my long hiatus, but I want to thank you for staying subscribed. I did have a tragic accident happen in my apartment, which pretty much destroyed all my equipment. But the most important thing, nobody got hurt. And luckily, recently, I was able to purchase everything I needed to get my channel back up. I will make another video more in depth on it later. I do have two more videos already in the works. After those videos, I'll start doing videos that you have requested. Again, thank you so much. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already.